Good morning, everybody. Can you all hear me? Loud and clear? Or are there any audio issues? Where is my chat box? Okay, perfect. So let's get started. Bismillah. <clears throat> Alhamdulillah. Alhamdulillah. Indeed, all praise is due to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. We praise Him and seek His help and forgiveness. We seek refuge in Allah from our soul's evil and our wrongdoings. He whom Allah guide, no one can misguide, and he whom Allah misguide, no one can guide. I bear witness that there is no God except Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, alone without any partners, and I bear witness that Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam is his abd and final messenger. Sending the root upon our Nabi, Allahumma salli ala Muhammad wa ala Muhammad, kama salli ta'ala Ibrahima wa ala ala Ibrahima inna ka hamidun majid. Allahumma barik ala Muhammad wa ala ala Muhammad, kama barak ta'ala Ibrahima wa ala ala Ibrahima inna ka hamidun majid. Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. I welcome you all with an Islamic greeting, which means peace and blessing be upon you. And may the uh, uh, blessing of God be upon you. So I welcome you all to ALMPG Cybersecurity with Rizwan Sheikh webinar. Sorry for the delay, first of all. Uh, Brother Rizwan is running a little bit late. He got, he had a, a call and he got a little bit busy. So he will be joining us in the next five minutes, inshallah. But I can start, we can start with the introduction and uh, if you guys have any questions, okay? Now, First, I want to jump into this webinar and talk about introdu introducing you why and for who, who is this webinar for. See, what happened was in the beginning of this year, I was just uh, uh, watching some documentary on YouTube. And there I discovered a documentary about, you know, how, how Israel has become the superpower or the world uh, uh, most powerful country in cybersecurity. And uh, it was a reported uh, a, a documentary by Vice News. You know, it's a pretty famous news channel or YouTube channel here in the U.S. And I was pretty much amazed how they started this and how they are now leading the world in cybersecurity, whether it is handling cybersecurity crimes, whether it is uh, infl infiltrating other countries uh, with cybersecurity expert. It is just uh, awe-inspiring, you know, how a little country can be so advanced in technology. And that gave me a thought that, you know, why can't we be that per country? Why can't we learn those skills or that technology? So I started the conversation with my partner or uh, with the co-founder, one of the other co-founder with ALMPG, Elias, brother Elias, and, you know, we said, okay, we need to do something about this. And, you know, then got the open way for us and, you know, uh, uh, brother Rizwan Sheikh's team reached out to us and we said, okay, yeah, we'll be more than happy to collaborate with you so that we can uh, educate our community or let them know at least what is cybersecurity doing it or not doing it, it is their choice. If they want to pursue a career in this, if they want to be uh, the next Rizwan Sheikh or maybe inshallah better than him, then feel free. So we are here and I said, you know, let's set up the uh, uh, webinar and let's see how it goes. And after webinar, we will also tell you, you know, how uh, if there, uh, there is a course being offered, how you can join in. By the way, this webinar is not focused on selling the class, nothing whatsoever. This is just to give you guys an idea how cybersecurity is changing the world and why you need to take step on it. You do, doesn't matter, you learn from us, you learn from anywhere, wherever you want to find the training, just go ahead, take it. But we want to put this in your heart and your mind that you know why it is so important. And believe me, I was taking a look and when we were marketing ALMPGs, uh, this webinar, right? And I was shocked that, you know, cybersecurity is one of the only field in IT technology fields, which is growing in exponential uh, rate. It is, it, they said that, you know, according to Bureau of Labor Statistics, they said 31% uh, in next 10 years, in next seven years, actually, it was ne actually next uh, eight years. It was a, a study done between 2019 to 2029, and they said, you know, it's going to grow more 31%. So there will be huge job opportunities, not just in the U.S., I'm talking all across the globe. Even in India, uh, the other day, uh, one of the brothers was mentioning there are huge job opportunities in cybersecurity. 
and they also he also mentioned me that you know one of uh, brother Rizwan Sheikh associate that you know uh, the police department uh, not police department but the government said that you know for every bank in India there would be a cyber security team so that you know they can mitigate all the uh, issues happening with all the security threat happening uh, with the cyber security crime. So this is the next big thing in IT, uh, IT, uh, you know, field or environment. And this is gaining momentum from last, I would say, last five, six years when we have seen so many data breaches all across the globe and in the U.S., which costed companies billions of dollars where people just took away our identities. Millions and millions of uh, users' identities, identities were stolen. So this is a big thing. This is not a small thing where you can just, you know, just for time being, you just want to take this course. No, it's a career. It's a, it's what you want to do next 10, 15, 20, 30 years. I would say for the next rest of your life, because this is not going to go away. Um, we have technology. Technology is not going to stop here. It's going to keep going. And this is the way forward. We need somebody to guard that technology. And you will always find uh, uh, scarcity of resources. So now moving on, what is the ag agenda for today? Okay. Uh, agenda for today is introduction to cybersecurity. Uh, I'm not going to do this. Brother Rizwan is going to do this. He's going to jump in. I'm pretty sure he's coming up. Or he has already joined in. Let me check. Okay, maybe he's joining in. Uh, and then we will talk about the scope and job market, uh, what it takes to be a cybersecurity analyst and an expert, uh, password cracking and prevention. We'll talk about that Trojan working and uh, countermeasure and mobile app application hacking like WhatsApp. We're not going to literally show you <laughs> so you guys can hack it. No, we're going to just tell you how it works. Okay. Uh, full course detail if you guys want, are interested in course and any Q&A. And please feel free if you have any questions, please put it in the chat box. We can take it during the session as well. Okay. Uh, so I want to check in if uh, Brother Rizwan has joined in already or not. So let me reach out to my team member here. Uh, quickly on my WhatsApp and see what's going on. Yeah. Okay. He's going to join in uh, pretty soon. So please bear with us. Uh, he's a pretty busy person and believe me, it was very hard uh, getting him on board for this session. So just to give you a quick introduction about him, you already know, you know, you must have research about this guy. You know, he's a founder and CTO of Pristine Info Solution. He's a renowned uh, uh, ethical hacker back in India and he's an information security researcher, crime, uh, cyber crime consultant and a trainer and what so, you know, Alhamdulillah. Uh, by grace of God, he has achieved so much in, in, in at such a young age. So he has uh, he has given and delivered a lot of lectures to uh, hundreds of I would say university and institutions back in India, and helping police there in India to uh, to fight cyber crime uh, uh, crime there in India. Uh, once we before here, and so that we have some time now, what I want to do is I want to quickly share how uh, the job market will be for this in next, um, let's say, next 10 years. So I'm going to just tell you guys how to do your research, right? It is a good lesson learned for me. I just learned it recently. So I want to show you guys as well, you know, how you can do it. So let me tell you, there is a, a website. I actually covered it last week. Uh, we did a training session uh, regarding how to find a job, resume, um, uh, I, not regarding how to find a job, but how to create a good resume. So under that, I explain people how to find uh, uh, wh what field you want to go into. So there is a website available. It's called uh, ONET, uh, ONET dot, yes, ONETcenter.org. It's a government provided site, right? There you can just go in and you can find database. It's, a, it's like a database. You can find information in here for any job in the US. How is the market? What is the pay? How you can get into this? Everything is available in this uh, center, in this resource center. This is available for free, by the way. So what you need to do, just go in here 
Right. I would start from this is actually a pretty big site. So let's see um, what I remember. I remember here what's new about owner. Uh, my next move. Yes, I'm going to go here. My next move. And here, let's say you are just you. I want to be you are just planning your few starting your career or you are you know you are already an experienced person but want to move uh, into a new field you can of course type in here like a doctor build house whatever you want to do it will guide you there are certain steps why which you take and it it will guide you now if you want to browse the careers by industry you can simply come here and you you can browse so let's see where is technology here do we have technology here uh see all career I don't see technology. How about IT information? Professional. Oh, yeah. Oh, hold on. Yeah, technical. So let's see. So what you can simply do is go up here. Where is my search button? I'm not going to you know what. I'm going to just search it. I'm going to go back. But you can go here and as well. Uh, let's start. I'm going to search here. Cybersecurity. And that's it. There you go. Information security analyst. Uh, this, these are like the technical names, right? Used here in US for the jobs. If you are looking for a job, you can search it by this name. Uh, security management specialist or uh, crime justice law enforcement. No, not this one. So let's take a look at this one and see how the future is for this one. Uh, so knowledge, skills, abilities, uh, personality, attention to details. Okay, the average salary for this one, you know, what I have seen is even I was doing the research, you know, what are they paid and it's minimum $99,000 annually. You know, less means it's it's not literally like that. But average I have seen is people offering uh, $45, $50, $70, $60 easily per hour. So now if you want to jump into more detail about any of this job, what you simply do is go down and look for see more detail at own it, uh, own it uh, uh, online. So when I click here, you will get all the information which you can actually end up using in your resume. So what does this guy do, right? Information security analyst. These are the tasks, technology performed. What are the technologies you need? You can actually take bits and pieces from here and put it in your resume as well. Okay, so this is very helpful. And uh, when you are creating your resume, when you are uh, starting your career, this is helpful. Even that if you want to fine tune your resume, this will be helpful. Okay, abilities, uh, work activities, uh, detail work activities, develop computer information policies and procedure, whatever it is, you know, electronic mail. And then if I go down more here, you will find the jobs here, projected job openings, and you will find the state wages as well here if you want to deep dive and say, I live in California. I am in LA, so I'm going to just look for California. I'll just put my zip code, and let's see if I can find something here. There you go. Wow. Okay, California is actually paying well, of course, because of the expenses here. It's expensive to live here. So it's 104 or 112 per annum here. So I'm, I live around this area, so it's going to be 104 starting, right? Uh, median uh, average uh, uh, earning for a person. And you see only less than 10% earns 56,000 or around 10% earns more than 156,000, but a majority of the people are in between. So there are high chances. It's a high paying um, job. So even if you have one or two years experience, you are still talking about getting good pay, uh, 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 annual salary. And by the way, you just in consulting, you can actually earn end up earning more than a full-time job in this position. So that's how you can search. So I hope uh, Brother Rizwan is there. Let me check on him. Uh, team on the group, can you inform us if he has joined in or not yet? Okay, he's logging in. So he'll be here in a minute or so. So that's how you can use it. I'm gonna just put this in uh, uh, in in the chat box so you guys can have a look at this. My next move dot org. Uh, simply come here, look for the occupation, whatever you want. Let's say I want to just look for business analyst. 
So I'm going to just simply go here, click on that, and that's it. Business analyst. So there is a business analyst. Where do I see? I see computer system analyst. That's what they call it. It also goes by business analyst. So if I go here, simply I can get every detail about this job. Okay, so simply whatever job or career you are looking for, doctor, whatever you want to do, just go here, type in, and you will get the information. So for now, I'll just paste, paste this in the chat box. Hopefully, this is helpful. Uh, going back, where is my chat box here? Everyone in the meeting. Uh, Brother is one, let us know when you have joined in. I think you have joined in. Okay. So he's in. Uh, but there is one, go ahead. Thank you very much. Hello everyone. First you are, since... your audio is a little bit uh, low. Yes. Am I audible to you? Uh, yes, but can, could you speak a little bit louder or come close to mic or? Mm, okay, am I audible now? Yes, it is better. So go ahead, um, uh, we are logged in and loaded, you're all set. Uh, before we begin, I want you to, I mean, I wanna personally thank you for uh, giving this opportunity. I know, alhamdulillah, you know, it's it's uh, it's great that we are educating the community to get into this field. Um, hopefully we can find uh, and create a few more, uh, not few more, but hundreds of more of Rizwan Sheikh here in the US. So thank you so much. Uh, please go ahead. Uh, you can begin the session, and whenever you want, you uh, let me know. Uh, we will. I will make. Uh, you are actually a co-host, so you can share your screen as well. Okay. Go ahead. Sure. Sure. Assalamualaikum, everyone. First of all, sincere apologize for the minor delay. Uh, was stuck somewhere in between the traffic uh, mode here in India. Uh, but anyways, uh, back on time, and uh, I will make sure that this particular session covers up the agenda of keeping this and gathering this crowd over here. My name is Rizwan Sheikh, just to reintroduce myself. And we people call ourselves with a very unique identity known as ethical hacker. This term ethical hacker sounds very interesting to majority of the people, but it has some pros and cons associated with it. Cyber security expert is the correct word I would rather say. Because I remember an interview where I was delivering to one of the media channel and the anchor started questioning how a hacker can be ethical. It is as good as saying ethical criminal, ethical murderer, ethical hacker, and so on. So it's always better to call yourself a cybersecurity expert. Every country has a different cyber law and every country has a different approach towards hacking. Some of the country keeps ethical hackers as respected as doctors and other profiles. Some countries consider ethical hackers as criminal. Some countries are moderate. They do not have much interest into this. So depending upon your locality, your region, this has to be uh, studied upon. Especially we call the term cyber law. You have to study the cyber law of your respective country in order to uh, be very well aware about what term to be used. Let's begin with our session. Uh, we are going to cover a few of the pointers over here. The thing that we are going to cover will majorly include practical task. What I'm going to do is I will be sharing my screen with everyone and I will be performing certain live hacks along with certain demonstrations on my screen. And you would be watching it live on your screens write this at a given point of time. Having said this, majority of the tasks that we are going to perform will be unethical. I repeat again, yes, we are going to perform majority of unethical tasks, but with very correct intentions in order to learn how unethical people work, how to prevent or defend ourselves, and at the same time, how to investigate in such scenarios, right? So without wasting any more time, Let's directly uh, begin with our session. The very basic point we begin with is with the intro part. 
many of the people are confused in the term cyber security uh yes you were saying something uh but uh, brother is one one quick question do you want me to still record the session while you do this is it fine uh yeah it's it's completely fine no issue okay perfect go ahead yeah okay uh and any point given point of time if anyone has any query any doubt you can simply leave a message in the chat box i am simultaneously chatting the chatting box over here i may take some time to respond but i will definitely check and update everyone over here okay now first of all what is cyber security in order to understand what is cyber security one must understand what is cyber space i used a term cyber space now cyber space is a term which covers everything of cyber when i say everything of cyber it means every device every software every virtual thing that is technical intelligent smart runs on electronic technologies is a part of cyber space now when i say this it's a part of cyber space let's just imagine what all things are a part of cyber space when i say cyber space is a very wide term covering a majority of these things which are uh, uh basically smart technical electronic so let me just uh, share my screen with everyone so that even you can understand uh things more uh professionally as well as it will be easier for everyone to remember so i'll just enable my screen sharing option give me a moment there might be possibility i will be disabling my video camera in between but you would be able to hear me you would be able to uh, see my screen but you may not be able to see me uh, temporary for a time being till the time i am sharing my screen so just give me a moment i will enable the screen sharing option Okay, cool, perfect, and share screen. Continue. Right, so my screen is shared, and uh, I hope everyone can see my screen. Yes, we can. We can see you and see see the screen as well. Thank you so much. Okay, so I'm just opening a website, which is my personal website, rezwanonline.com. It's a very normal website containing my decent photographs, uh, very decent work done by my web development team and my photo editing team. It's a wonderful website. Many of you might visit the website rezwanonline.com and all. But one thing is over here. What if I say, just upon visiting this link, you are hacked? yes you heard it right just upon visiting this single link you are getting hacked it is possible i will display that thing as well in the real time right now of course the example which i have taken for my personal website this is not a harmful website it won't hack you but something similar can happen with any other website so i will be covering up this particular part as well how exactly remotely hacking can be done just by sending a link to someone right so let's come one step back what we were discussing was about cyberspace now i have just switched on my notepad file so that it's easy for everyone to remember the things that i'm writing cyber security term which i used now let me first cover up the term cyberspace now cyberspace is something which covers up all technical things right from your desktop laptop your hard drive external hard drive pen drives also emails internet softwares all these are part of cyber space atm machines cctv cameras drones even your mobile phones smartphones all these are part of cyber space cyber space you understood it covers almost everything that are written and mentioned over here cyber law is nothing but the law governing cyber space you know what is cyber space so cyber law law governing cyber space the law which governs all these things is known as cyber law cyber security you automatically understands the meaning of it 
security covering up all this spectrum of the things which i have mentioned over here right from your cell phone security to your drone security to the security of your cctv camera to the atm machine security from your source code review software as internet emails every damn thing securing these things is a part of cyber security right so the most important thing to remember is the term cyber space cyber space covers up all these things law governing cyber space is cyber law what is cyber security security of all these things now when i use the term cyber law remember a very important point internet do not have any geographical boundary but cyber law is territory bounded i hope you understood the meaning cyber law is territory bounded internet do not have any geographical boundary but law is territory bounded every country has a different law and some countries have something as legal where some countries have mentioned that as illegal right so you have to prospectively study the law of uh, uh, your country particularly in order to understand the things how exactly this works out we'll just uh, open the chat box and keep it in the side row so that uh, it's easier for uh, me to read in between as well right <clears throat> okay now cyber law uh, cyber law law governing cyber space is cyber law and uh, as i said many things are illegal in some country but the same thing is legal in another country so you have to be very careful and since internet do not have any geographical boundary it is uh, as simple as like i can simply visit a website like godaddy us and i can register a domain name for myself i can host uh, my website on some hosting server located somewhere in uk and i can uh, run an e-commerce website and sell the products in a country like china just by sitting here in india i do not require visa and passport to do that thing right so internet do not have any geographical boundary whereas law is territory bounded so i have to follow the law of different countries where i am running this particular business and where my hosting is present just keep this thing in mind so that uh, you can actually link the future talk which i am going to do so it won't be a confusing stuff for you now i was talking about a part where uh, this particular website which i shown you rizwanonline.com which actually has certain things that just with a click on uh, this particular thing link automatically you would be i will just disable this uh, anode thing i guess uh, by mistake only someone is uh, putting a minor difference in this okay so just with a click on the link system is hacked now how it is possible okay now we are coming to the part where we are going to understand how the real hacking works here i am going to show you something in the real time imagine an example of the physical world person a wants to beat person b in the physical world what i am saying is person a i order him to beat person b in the physical world what this person a will ask he will say what is the name of person b he will gather some more information for example how well built he is it should not like i went to hit him and he only hits me right also he will gather some more information is he a vvip person very important person is he having uh, bodyguards with him and is he carrying any weapon or arms or ammunition with him right so once he gathers sufficient information then he plans his attack in the very similar way in the virtual world we are going to gather some information of our target system so that we can attack him right so attacking a system requires some pre phase of information gathering now what information do you require in order to hack into someone's computer system now let me show you i'm just opening my notepad file again remember information gathering 
is pre phase of attack the information gathering is not an attack but it's a pre phase of attack and the technical term assigned to this information gathering is footprinting footprinting is the technical term assigned to information gathering technique that is the pre phase of attack which we do so what information do we gather in footprinting only two information required in order to hack into anyone's computer in order to beat a person in the physical world the same kind of information is required in the virtual world the information that we require is number 1 finding ip address finding the ip address of the person is a very very important thing number 2 finding operating system once i find the ip address and i find the os now it's very easy for me to compromise someone's computer system let me show you how it is done first of all let's see how footprinting can be done let me open a very famous website for you that is google.com i just open my safari web browser and i type google.com i press the enter button you can see when i open google.com since i am sitting in india on the left bottom it's showing me google india over here right google india is written over here right you can see on the left bottom side google india is written over here how google is aware i am in india right now it's because google has recorded my ip address ip address is a unique identity assigned to every computer connected to the internet i am connected to internet i have an ip address assigned uniquely to my system let me open a website what is my ip address.com or you can simply go on google and type what is my ip and within no time you will see the ip address written over here and you can find out my ip is something like 42.111. something. something of this particular internet service provider in the country india this is my ip address and this is my ip address where which from which i am connected to right now now every computer connected to internet is assigned with unique identity that means every one of you has a different ip address every one of you right now if you go on your browser and open any website like what is my ip address you will see a different number all together over here and that is your unique identity right now to connect to the global internet network right this particular ip address is recorded by google and google has seen that a person from india has visited so google has given me a customized indian version of the website the big question arises over here is who gave permission to google to record my ip why google is recording my ip address let me tell you a thing it is not just google any website which you visit on the internet records your ip let it be facebook twitter linkedin yahoo instagram msn microsoft or any other website every website records your ip address every website is aware who you are what's your internet service provider which city you belong to and what you are exactly surfing yes any website which you visit records this much information of yours don't be surprised there is something more to it the website even records the operating system and the device the user the visitor is using so as soon as you open your iphone or any other platform mobile phone you just open the web browser and you type any damn website name as soon as you open the website the owner of the website is aware who you are what is your device what operating system you are using what is your isp and so many other details 
Okay, now I have one of my personal website I have shown you that is rizwanonline.com, a very decent website made by my development team. They're doing a wonderful job. I can ask any of you to see my website, how it is. Imagine you visited this website. I just told you every website records IP, even my website does. And the log of the visitor of this website is available with me. So as soon as you open the website, the first thing I'm going to get is your IP address. The second thing I'm going to get is your operating system. Let me open a panel for you, which records such information. I will display you live how the visitor log is being recorded. I will just open my visitor log sheet for you so that you can actually see the list of visitors along with what all information any damn website is recording. So I just opened the visitor log sheet and there's so many visitors on the website. You can see it's huge, it's very huge actually. And I see, uh, suppose, uh, let me see it over here. Randomly, 1st October 2020, 7.49 PM, a visitor from this particular IP address visited my website. And the visitor was using Mac OS operating system, right? Also, you can see many a times even browser is successfully detected. You can see Safari browser of Mac OS. Unknown browser, basically it happens because when uh, the link is hyperlinked on some website like Facebook and other messengers. And there is a button on the right hand side. If you see, there is a button track. When I click on the track button, it actually displays me the ISP and the location of the visitor as well, right? So you can see what all information is gathered when you visit a website. Now imagine a scenario, n number of websites which you visit randomly on chatting messenger, Facebook messenger, or even on your WhatsApp messenger. Majority of us has got the habit of randomly clicking on any unknown link received from unknown trusted sources, non-trusted sources, right? We should stop this activity because once the footprinting part is done by the attacker, once the information gathering is done by the attacker, hacking is very easy. Okay. Remember we haven't done hacking as of now. We have done the pre phase of attack. Right. I hope it's pretty clear. We are still at the information gathering phase. Till now, we haven't done any hacking. We are just gathering the information of our target. Imagine we got the sufficient required information. What next? After gathering the sufficient information, the next image step is to attack. Attack using a tool now this tool can be considered as a weapon example in physical world environment when you're fighting with someone you're going to take a hammer or a rod and then hit a person if a fighting is happening right in the similar world uh, in the virtual world environment all you're going to do is use a virus or a trojan and this virus or a Trojan is kind of your weapon, right? And this weapon can be a very dangerous thing. Now let me show you a real time Trojan that I am going to show you. And that software, that malicious software is so harmful that this particular thing can actually show you how remember points if footprinting is not done properly hacking is tough so footprinting is a very important part in honey hacking until and unless information gathering is weak hacking is not possible now why we are learning this thing because we can learn the countermeasure and the investigation right after this attack we are going to learn how to investigate and how to counter this attack 
as well as how criminals will be behind the bar who are performing this attack we are going to learn that right but in order to learn that efficiently we should be aware how this unethical people work and that's why we are doing it in the real time thing so now what i'm going to do is i'm going to display you a real time trojan right now if you haven't used any trojan in the past remember start using from the older version of the trojan if you directly jump on the recent trojans available in the market there might be a possibility that you may feel it tough to use a typical trojan will be having two parts let's call it part number 1 and part number 2 part number 1 of the trojan should be injected into victim's computer system and part number 2 will remain with attacker so a typical trojan will be having two parts part 1 part 2 part number 1 will be sent to victim let me open a trojan for you on my screen you can see i am opening my computer visiting c drive going in the pristine folder and here is one of the trojan kept in my system and you can see the bottom two files impfile.exe is the part one of the trojan this particular file somehow i should inject into the victims computer system and part 2.exe is the file that will be with attacker let me become the victim myself i am going to run impfile.exe in my own computer system and i just double click on this file and nothing happens i double click on it again nothing happens you can see nothing is happening over here what the victim will think is the file is not working and he will simply ignore and move ahead but just upon double click nothing runs but trojan is running in the background any person from any corner of this world right now can hack my system remotely using this particular trojan let me show you how all the attacker will do is he will switch on part number 2 i only become the attacker i only become the victim over here in this case you can see at the bottom line i see an option with the name no connection all i have to do is enter my own ip address and press the connect button in my case i am entering my local loopback address i press the connect button and bottom line displays me the message connected to ip address right now there are so many buttons over here for example if i click on open cd rom button automatically the cd rom of the victim will open and victim won't have any clue how this is happening right you can play a decent prank with your friend in my case if i do this my cd rom will open right second option show image uh, but, but brother there is one one quick thing i want to add here for those of you who don't know cd rom <laughs> here in the us i don't think we have any cd rom anymore so it's it's a it's 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 used to put in cd a compact drive in your computer uh so brother is one most of our computer here in the us they, they don't have it here anymore mm -hmm. so just an fyi no problem no problem okay but for the people who do not have cd rom like even in my system i don't have a cd rom drive right now so this option won't do anything nothing happens but there are many other options we can play with there is a button with the name show image this particular button allows me with an option to browse any image and pop up onto my friend's computer system imagine your friend is sitting somewhere in public no need to tell you what kind of images you can pop up right so apart from playing prank there are so many other things that can be done top mouse makes left click right click right to left and you can trouble your victim start program you can actually start any particular application play sound is an option where you can actually uh, play any kind of uh, sound or audios in the victim's computer system you can exit the windows you can control his mouse 
there are some other buttons as well for example go to url i can type any website name over here for example google.com and after typing i press this go to url button as soon as i click on this button you can see in the background automatically the website google.com is opening so you can actually open any damn website in the victims computer system file manager the most dangerous tab available with this trojan this particular option allows you to download and upload any kind of files and folders from and to attacker and victims computer system and this particular option is used by many of the unethical people to steal data from any particular system right as well as people dump some other malware and spyware files as well in the victims computer system so it's a very danger option it's very similar to file explorer of the mobile phone then there are some other buttons for example message manager is one of the tab using which a hacker can chat with his victim for example i type the message like surprise you are hacked and i can type any other message as well pay one bitcoin ransom amount to get yourself unhacked any random message and when i click on the send message button the message pops up on the victim's computer and victim won't have any clue how this is happening right so i press the okay button and i quickly go in my task manager and i end this imp file.exe process once i end this particular task when now i am pressing the connect button the bottom line displays me the message couldn't connect because part one of the trojan is off right so you can imagine the small file whose size is less than 462 kb not even half the mb can create such a big damage right i can read certain questions in the chat box where how can you find whether you are injected or not we are going to cover this particular part as well as we are going to cover the investigation part right after this so first let's understand the counter measure precaution is better than cure but obvious so you have to be careful that you are not installing or running any such application or file inside your computer system so the counter measure is very very simple never click on any untrusted links untrusted attachments receive from unknown or untrusted sources you know one single click is enough to grant full remote access of your system we have to be very careful on what particular files and applications we are running imagine what what all hackers can do they can gift you a pen drive with a trojan in it they can send you an email as a spoofed email claiming to be someone uh, who is known to you as well as many other stuffs can be tried upon remember if there is a file which you are doubtful whether it's a trojan or not so you can rely on a website which is virustotal.com virustotal.com is a website which has 50 plus antiviruses can checklist with it all you can do is visit this website upload the file which is in doubt and that file will be scanned by this particular website with 50 plus different antiviruses and you will get the result within a minute on what that particular file is about so you can definitely save this particular bookmark this site and you can always rely on it in order to protect yourself so by any chance you received an attachment and you are unsure whether it's a harmful or it's a real attachment you can simply download without running it upload it on virus total once uploaded you will get the result what this exactly it is what if you are already infected so you have to manually either remove the trojan or rely on some third party antivirus and anti malware tool to remove it 
because every virus every malware creates its entry at a different different locations i hope this particular part of the trojan is quite clear to everyone we are going to use a advanced version of it but at the end of our session not right now right i hope the part 1 is pretty clear now let me take you to the part of breaking into something known as passwords password security now this topic is different from the topic we were learning but both the topic will indirectly end up correlating each other so i'm taking the part one of both the things and we'll then jump on the investigation part password security let me directly take you to the part of password cracking security is something which will prevent from your password getting leaked hacked or cracked in password cracking one of the attack we are going to learn right now is known as brute force attack in very simple words i am going to display you a thing right now using which any of the accounts password can be cracked or hacked yes you heard it right whether the account belongs to facebook twitter linkedin or any other portal how a typical password attack can be done upon let's see this in the real time in order to see this in the real time one must understand what is brute force attack let me tell you that brute force attack is an attack in which i am going to use a third party software right now i am going to use a third party software right now and this particular software attack which i am going to use will try combinations of all keys available on my keyboard as password so whatever buttons that are present on my keyboard will be attempted as password how it's going to work i will be opening a software in front of your screen and i will be assigning two different tasks to my software please watch on the screen very carefully i will be opening a software and i will be assigning two different tasks to my software task number 1 i will ask my software to try all password attempts between 1 to 6 character length only you heard it right i have asked my software to try no big passwords try less than 6 characters only second task i am going to assign to my software would be try only numbers you can see what i have just done is i have asked my software first of all to try less than 6 characters and second i have asked my software to try only numbers one can simply imagine the logic behind this numbers only six characters how my software will work the first attempt my software will make would be 000000 second attempt my software make would be 000001 then 000002 000003 456 7 8 9 10 11 12 it will go till 999999 all the numbers less than 6 characters will be attempted the best thing with my software is the speed of my software would be half a million passwords per second in other words 5 lakh passwords per second every second it can attempt half a million passwords that means every 2 seconds i am attempting almost 1 million attempts so if i run the attack at such a high speed i will be able to crack this 000200999999 in less than 2 seconds 1 million attempts and if my password is in numbers let it be any number less than 6 characters it will be cracked in 2 seconds for example if my password is something like 637483 2 second is enough to break it majority of the otps one time password which you receive on your cell phone are basically numbers 
less than four or six characters. And majority of OTPs can be tracked in less than two seconds. But I was talking about breaking into someone's Facebook account, right? Now my Facebook password is also something like Rizwan123 or something on my company name, something like Christine123. So by this method, when I'm going to run the attempt, within two seconds, I will get the message, all attempts done, password not found. What I will do now, I'll open the same software again. And this time I will modify task number two, asking my software to try numbers and small letters combination. So the same software is going to run A to Z 26 alphabets and zero to nine numbers at the same file like password per second speed. Definitely time duration to crack may increase by a few seconds, but I'll get what my password is. Suppose I still didn't get the password. So now I'll add a task more, try capital letter as well. 26 small letters, 26 capital letters and 0 to 9 numbers. Suppose I still didn't get the password. So now I'll say try symbols as well. Still I didn't get the password. Entire keyboard is over here. So now I'll start increasing the length of my password. 127, 128, 129 and so on. Definitely there would be a time coming when I'm actually getting what my password is. Right, time duration may keep on increasing by few minutes, but the best thing is speed of my software is still very, very high. I hope you understood the logic behind this. So let me use this tool in the real time and show you a real time demonstration. Instead of running this attack on some live website, which may create havoc to the website owners and it will create a legal concern. Let's first run this attempt on a local file system. Once successful, then I'll show you how can you run it over the internet. And then we are going to learn the countermeasure and the investigation part behind it. So what I'll be doing is, I will be better creating a PDF file or a zip file. We'll be assigning a password to it. First, we'll break the password of this particular document and then we'll see how exactly we can crack it. So let me write a random data over here. Imagine this is very important data for me. So I'll save this file on my desktop in the best readable format. In order to assign password to this, I'll go in tools, general options, and this is the place where I can set the password. Let me begin with a very simple password. Let my password be something like uh, one, two, three, four, five, six. I reconfirm the password. One, two, three, four, five, six. And I save this. You can see the file is over here. When I try to open this file, it is asking me to enter the password without which I cannot view the data of this particular document. Now I want to break the password of this file. So in order to break it, I'm going to use a third party software. The name of the software is office key. In the full time session that we are going to conduct very soon, you will be getting all this virtual weapons with you. Softwares for recovery, for ethical hacking and everything. So first understand how exactly this works. The first thing that I'm going to do is go in settings, brute force. And this is the place where I'm going to assign the length of my password. My password is 123456. So length is six characters long. It is but obvious that when you are trying to break someone else's password, you are unaware how big their passwords are. So by default, you're going to try multiple attempts. Begin with smaller number. If you're not getting, you can keep on increasing it. I go in symbol set. I will just select digits. I will untick lowercase, uppercase, everything because my password consists only of numbers. Again, it is but obvious when you're unsure what your password, what the other person's password is. By default, you're going to keep all these things selected. I press the OK button. Now, all I have to do is just drag and drop this file into this window and the magic starts. Watch very carefully. I'm just dragging and dropping this file into this window. Leave the mouse, 
विद इन नो टाइम आई सी फाइल ओपन पासवर्ड इज वन टू थ्री फोर फाइव सिक्स I didn't even realize what is running out in the background. It was like just drag and drop, and boom! Here is my password. But you know what was running in the background? Numbers only, less than six characters. Started with triple zero, triple zero. Within fraction of second, it gave one, two, three, four, five, six. Let us very quickly test the capability of this software by changing the password and making it bit complicated. So let my new password be something like. not very complicated let's make it minor complicated so the new password would be a 1 2 3 4 i type small letter a so my password becomes a 1 2 3 4 and i save this file you can see the file is over here with the new password i have to open the same software i go in settings brute force my password is a1234 so length is can anyone guess the length a1234 so my length would be five characters long absolutely even if i keep it as six not an issue if i keep it as four it won't work so you can keep the bigger size since i know the password is five characters long i keep it as five i go in symbol set what all should i select over here digits and yes lower case absolutely so i select these two things i press the okay button and now all i have to do is just drag and drop this file over here leave the mouse but upon leaving the file it is not giving me my password what it is showing you can see testing password it is randomly attempting combination of small letters and numbers i can read 1 spdr 23 put 2086h 39hdz something something below that i can see tested 91 lakh almost uh, multi uh, multi lakh password tested in 24 25 26 seconds and the last line displays me password check per second speed is almost touching half a million passwords per second it's more than 35 seconds i didn't get my combination yet and finally i got the password a1234 right so you can read a line over here how many attempts have been done in 38 seconds and average speed was this almost touching half a million password per second so at such a high speed this means even if i keep any damn kind of password for this particular document it's going to crack right now what if i say something similar to this now this is the software we are using to break the password of microsoft office word document what if i say i have some other tool which works on certain other platforms i have a tool for crack cracking pdf file i have a tool for cracking password which belongs to zip file i have a tool which be, uh, cracks the password of facebook twitter linkedin amazon etc works in the very similar fashion the way i am cracking this particular password there are some other softwares as well so what is the counter measure let's come on the ethical part if i say what is the particular counter measure that can be done in order to prevent yourself from getting hacked any idea any answers from you people what should be the ideal password so that your account remains hack proof remember reverse engineering and password cracking are two different thing if you are talking about any particular wifi file format file so it's not just password protected it's encrypted with certain other things okay so here i got multiple counter measures from multiple people uh, quite a decent uh, amount of uh, suggestions given many people are preferring multi factor authentication basically 
you may receive an otp upon entering correct password on your cell phone or any other email id that is also a way using special characters using combination of letter number symbols disable after multiple try password up to 20 characters all these are coming up as a countermeasure okay so let us imagine when my password was 1 2 3 4 5 it took one second to crack okay there is one more very good countermeasure i can read is space between password just let me show you something when i go in uh, settings symbol set there is a button space as well over here right so it can be attempted as a combination as well uh so i was talking about like when my password was 1 2 3 4 5 6 it took a second to crack when i modified it to a 1 2 3 4 the cracking time increase from 1 second to almost 35 seconds if i add a capital letter in my password my password becomes something like capital a small a 1 2 3 4 the cracking time may increase to 3 minutes if i add a symbol in my password my password becomes something like a, the red capital a small a 1 2 3 4 the cracking time may increase to 30 minutes but i can wait for half an hour if i am getting someone's password right i am pretty sure you may wait entire night if you are getting your friend's password online so even after keeping an alpha numeric password you are just increasing the time to crack by max to max by an hour or two but that's not making you hack proof what if i increase the length of my password to more than 16 characters length and it's alpha numeric so the average cracking time for a 16 character length password would be minimum 30 days a month yes a 16 character long password would take at least 30 days to crack so the countermeasure would be keeping an alpha numeric password but making sure that the length of your password is minimum 16 16 characters long you would say no one is going to keep their system on for a period more than 30 days right but there are some people like me we got some dedicated servers kept in our offices across various cities and these are the things which keep running on them and servers are the computer systems which never shut down servers are the computer system which are on since multiple years in my company in my office supported by multiple power backups multiple internet line etc now what is the countermeasure after 30 days if you are going to get hacked the last countermeasure is making sure to change your password every 30 days so the countermeasure keeping an alpha numeric password making sure the length is minimum 16 characters long but still making sure that you are changing it every month and if you are not changing it changing it everyone you can be a victim to any big hacker who got the setup and if someone is actually behind you right and i can understand that many of the people haven't changed their password since many years and how do we keep our password name of wife husband 1 2 3 name of girlfriend boyfriend 1 2 right this is something which is not only easy to crack but guessable as well so i request everyone to make sure to change this make sure to change your password you may think change something else right so do not change your wife husband but change your password you can definitely rely on something known as password managers but i prefer brain is the best password manager you have let me give an example what if i say i want to set up password so i'll type something like rizwan pristine at the rate now i'm setting password for my facebook account so i'll type f a c three initials in the month of october 2020 so my password becomes rizwan pristine at the rate facebook october 2020 for my gmail account i will just change this three initials g m a for instagram account i'll change i n s man changes password changes now this is something which is easy to remember alpha numeric 16 character plus length plus you can change it every 30 days and the best thing is you can remember this in your brain also 
this is guessable you should not keep in a such a simple format you should design something of your own which is not guessable as well right so these are the countermeasures which i recommend at the user end at the server end there are countermeasures which system admin and it employees take something like account locking policy if the password is entered incorrectly for 10 continuous time the account will be temporarily locked then there are some other methods for example captcha verification you know those irritating numbers and images appears which verifies whether you are human or robot those are actually to verify and stop brute force attack but everything comes up with a bypass as ethical hackers developed and secure the system unethical develops more and they develop a hack then again ethical hackers comes up with a security solution and unethical hackers again breaks it this is a ever going process for account locking policy user ha- uh, unethical hackers have integrated something known as ip changer tool with brute force attack software so your ip keeps on changing at a frequent interval and the attack methodology prefers as if Uh, attack is run using a different system an account do not easily locked out for captcha verification there is something known as dcaptcha tool many of the hackers have integrated dcaptcha tool which reads the captcha and are integrated brute force attack software as well of course two factor authentication and all these things plays a major role but basics must be very strong so i request everyone to have a strong password and you know how to set a strong password hands forth i hope the password cracking thing is quite clear with everyone any doubt any query you can feel free to type in the chat box okay now covering password cracking let me show you something i go in start menu all programs i go in password software now you can see the list of softwares i have acrobat key now this is the software used to break password of pdf files mail key for mailing clients messenger key for chatting messengers office key the one which was just used it's a part of the same family you couldn't create it separately then we have rar key for winrar zip key for winzip and so on right so all these softwares are built for attack tool but the actual softwares are available in a completely different operating system which is known as kali linux now kali is known as hackers operating system because it has more than 700 plus pre installed hacking tools in it used for vulnerability assessment and penetration testing and all the attacks are actually done using this particular platform and not by windows operating system since it has inbuilt anonymity and many of the things are predefined pre installed in it we are using windows for demonstration since easy and it has the interface which majority of the people uses as a user at the user end okay i hope uh, the things are quite clear over here now let's come back to the trojan part you have seen part one of the trojan which we used that was imp file.exe I have a file with me. The name of the file is imp file dot apk. Apk is for Android phones. All I want is victim running this particular file in his cell phone. I have a cell phone Android phone with me right now. I'm going to run this particular file in my cell phone. and as soon as i run this i want to show you how exactly it is granting full remote access of the cell phone to the attacker we call this particular trojan of mobile with the name pristine spy for demonstration purpose and we use it only in the ethical and the legal formalities so i just enter the credentials over here to see how the data is being fetched in the from the cell phone where the malware is installed i logged into precision spy software and you can see how easily i am getting the access to entire data of the cell phone the first option over here i read is call logs and when i click on the call logs button i see 
all incoming outgoing and missed calls data over here along with mobile number date time duration for how long which call was running right so just upon installation you can see how easily the access is granted by this particular trojan not only call logs but there is an option with the name call recordings and when i click on call recording option i can also hear each and every call over here right so you can see how dangerous this particular malware could be messages is one of the best app which allows me to read all inbox and sendbox messages of the victim then i have contact book over here and tap phone book will be here mic recorder now this is one of the best option we have integrated this particular option allows me to start the microphone of anyone's cell phone no matter where the cell phone is kept it can be on the desk it can be in the pocket of the person i can remotely trigger a command to start the mic and i can record the surrounding so no matter even if the cell phone call is not on the phone is kept idle but it's connected to the internet automatically someone can spy then we have an option over here with the name location tracking this particular option gives the live gps location of the victim you can actually have a live look on the google map wherever victim is traveling you can keep an eye on him screen capture is nothing but taking the screenshot of the cell phone whatever being running on the screen whether it's any messenger or any other movie or any photograph a screenshot will be taken without saving in the gallery of the cell phone automatically it will be transferred to the database of the hacker over here the last option over here we have is keystrokes recorder this particular option has the capability of recording all typed keystrokes whatever being written typed from the keyboard will be recorded turn on live camera now this is another danger option which allows attacker to remotely switch on the video camera and start the video recording nothing will be displayed on the screen a remote video recording will be on and anyone can actually watch it live there are so many other options social media includes all the messengers including whatsapp and other messengers internet accessibility is about the browser history you can see what this small apk file can do now how this apk is transferred either over whatsapp or some other methodology and once injected the person is hacked the only countermeasure is do not install any third party unknown softwares once installed you have to manually scan the cell phone and manually remove it by going in settings list of install applications and that's the only way to remove the malware from your cell phone i hope you got this particular point as well very clearly we have learned about uh, multiple trojans uh, one of the trojan we have used was about uh, particular uh, uh, laptops basically for the windows operating system another trojan we have used just right now is about uh, this particular android cell phone and you have seen the working of both the trojans is almost similar countermeasure is also similar and again i repeat precaution is better than countermeasure let us come to the investigation part you remember upon clicking on link ip address is recorded in the investigation all the law enforcement agency does is communicates with the website owner and gets the ip log for example if any crime is committed on facebook.com facebook will reveal the ip address of the user to the law enforcement department that's it that that's basically the investigation part of the legal entities right and just i want to go through the brief scope uh, of profiles and the opportunities in this field let me tell you this is one of the highest paying role or profile in the it industry but your skill set matters a lot 
there are many people who are asking about the questions about certifications about so many other things let me tell you to become a professional cyber security expert all you have to do is master yourself into four things to begin your journey number 1 network security number 2 email and app security number 3 web security and number 4 cyber law internationally once you are strong in these four pillars you are a professional cyber security expert as a beginner to become more professional into this after learning this you have to learn vapt which stands for vulnerability assessment and penetration testing vapt is nothing but the name of the service to make something hack proof web vapt to make website hack proof network vapt to make network hack proof similarly there is application vapt iot vapt then you have to learn source code review reverse engineering bug bounty hunting and vapt report writing the things which i am telling you is actually combined in a single pack of training program the training level 1 program we call it certified information security and ethical hacker that is the beginning part of cyber security journey where we are conducting this particular training program combining as a pack of this four materials and once a person is strong enough in this the second part so so many things which i told you right now is the advanced level of hacking which is into cpt that is certified penetration testing expert we are coming up with a very very professional approach and with a team of group of hackers designed this course and multiple trainers coming on board for the community for the benefit of particular organization to have everyone growth uh, in this particular profile and we basically want to see the gap filled the requirement of hackers is very wide across the globe i know the statistics of multiple nations especially uh, when we talk about us russia then we go ahead to certain regions of uk east of africa and uh, certain regions of asia as well uh, the number of crimes are ever increasing the name which i have taken the number of cyber crimes are ever increasing in this regions compared to any other part of the world and uh we have seen a tremendous growth in cyber crime indirectly there is tremendous requirement of cyber security experts it is simple as the crime is growing the requirement for experts are also increasing right and when we talk about government bodies and governing agencies the requirement is so so high i will tell you we uh, in india we couldn't even meet uh, in the recent time one tenth of the requirement of the total number of crimes that are happening right and the hiring process starts a lot and number of qualified pe- people qualified people are also very very less and this is the place where you have to knock the opportunity and enter into it one thing i can guarantee and commit is the delivery and the approach the way you are going to learn would be something extraordinary you will be acquiring the skill set and yourself with with this particular training programs i am not going deep by explaining the pdf format of the file of the content well graphically designed you will be receiving that on your email and will be shared to you but the basic approach is written over here anyone who is willing to make career out of this anyone who is willing to make or upgrade themselves into it who are already into it and learn to upgrade themselves in cyber security can definitely look for such kind of things right so i open the dais for question answer round you can uh, leave all your queries all your doubts all your questions you have i definitely try to uh help you out with the answers so just disabled my screen sharing option right now and yes okay so a lot of questions are coming there is a question from uh, one of the person how challenging can entry into the business or job becomes after the course i'll tell you once you have the skill set and you are capable of compromising or penetrating into something 
it's a piece of cake for you people will approach you once you show them the skill sets and awards and recognitions and this is what you have done either bug bounty or hall of fame but if you don't have skill sets then it's but always it's very tough okay another question uh, how about mac os and iphones the same applies for every platform every platform has a malware every platform has a file which can be harmful for it okay uh, school students can join yes definitely there is a basic program for school students they can opt for that particular thing aws cloud based security that is covered in the advanced version of cpt uh, uh, that is a part of the module but you have to begin with the basics in order to go to the advanced part okay there is another question oh, yeah. go ahead go ahead so there is another question uh, in us do you need top secret clearance for this field job i'll tell you skill set is something that is going to put you in the top field nothing else of course when you work for certain agencies like even defense agency over here in india and certain other countries where you are working that requires certain other kind of uh, clearance things uh, about your studies and all but uh, the basic criteria to learn and uh, get a job there is nothing as such usually the security clearance is for those people who wants to work for federal agencies or police agencies here in the us so you don't need uh, uh, the security clearance for any other client like you know working for banking or any other sector right then uh, of course you will be updated with the course dates and everything when it is going to come uh, any prerequisite to have this course the prerequisite is you must be aware of basic of the internet you must be very well versed with the basic knowledge of the internet that's only the prerequisite since in the cish portion which i am going to cover up from the basics has a, a very very beginning from what is an ip address we are beginning from that extent so that's not a concern we'll cover that in two hours then we we'll directly jump on the cyber security parts it background is uh, not mandatory but you must have it knowledge uh brother is one one question i had was you know does anybody need uh, any kind of uh, you know a lot of people like data scientists they need at least a master degree or bachelor degree that's what they say but for this one do they need any kind of education background or educational degree okay the thing is if you see majority of the top hackers are teenagers if you have realized and they do not have any degree as such right <laughs> it is completely yeah. depends upon the skill set this is the only profile where your communication your education qualification all these things doesn't completely matter i won't say that you must not undergo the graduation degree or post graduation and other programs you should but if you have an awesome skill set these things doesn't matter so this is the only profile where once you have this kind of skill set rest of the thing doesn't matter catch gotcha. catch gotcha. uh somebody asked a question regarding the course uh, duration and cost so i just want to put some light on that you know alhamdulillah almpg you know was looking for some partner who can help the community here train uh, people in this technology and that's where we found brother is one and his team brother ata so they come uh, joined hand uh, with us you know almpg keeping in mind that this is not for the uh, uh, benefit of almpg or christian this is for the benefit of community so that's why we help, uh, we got together and we said we will offer this course and the course fee structure is pretty straightforward usually we offer uh, uh, the course is for offering uh, is an offering for $500 but any almpg member who wants to get registered for this course is going to cost you around $400 so this is i think a pretty basic investment for somebody who wants to learn something like this uh, brother rizwan also you mentioned that there was a pdf where detailed information about the course is mentioned i do have if you guys can see my screen can you all see my screen are you all able yeah. to see my screen or not Yes. Okay. So this is uh, this is the documentation I got, brother. Is one from your team, and it's a pretty detailed documentation, by the way. And I'm very, very, mashallah, I'm impressed in uh, what you have achieved and your company has achieved. This is phenomenal. So alhamdulillah, you so far I see that you have trained almost thirty thousand plus people. Wow, that is that that is a huge number. So great, you know. And in this documentation, the, uh, I see that uh, it was also mentioned what what is going to be covered in the course content. 
So there are two pages, I believe, uh, uh, what is going to be co covered in, in this course. So we will pass you on. Uh, I forwarded a link in the chat box regarding your interest, uh, kind of a registration form which shows your interest for this course. We will send you this documentation and all the other details you need. Uh, you can also join the WhatsApp group, and if you have any further questions, we can take it from take it there. Uh, but this is what uh, we are offering, right? It's pretty straightforward. It's just $400. Uh, ALMPG is not behind. Uh, our motive is not behind making money. We have other sources. ALMPG is more towards uh, placing people, uh, candidates on jobs. That is one of our sector and. Uh, uh, our main intention was that, you know, we should uh, educate our community about this field. And this is a growing field, as Brother Rizwan said uh, clearly, that, you know, the options here, you know, once you have the skill set are endless. So it is up to you. How do you want to take it? I actually already shared both of these links, right? You have the interest form. I put it in the chat box. And you have the WhatsApp group for ALMPG uh, cybersecurity. You can ask your question there. We will send all the information needed. Now, uh, regarding any other questions, uh, Rizwan Bhai, do you want to add in any anything else here? Uh, just one thing I want to say is like, uh, see, everything is good. If you have a single person interest to, or you, you are excited with the, with the term hacking, or you have something <laughs> in the back of your mind that this this particular thing excites you, so I, I will tell you, like, don't jump in on any conclusion. Just try to jump into this particular profile by undergoing the program. I'll make sure that uh, not only with the opportunity of internships and placements and so many other things, but there is a very, very wide level of opportunities available. And Alhamdulillah, we, we are very well versed with this. And I'm pretty sure, like, uh, almost every one of us would be uh, at the level that we are actually achieving something in this particular profile and industry. That, that's all from my side. Okay, so anyone has any other question, you can simply text up. We'll definitely provide career guidance and so many other things uh, attached with it, which is not being uh, uh, spoken in a short session, but you will be getting all the informations uh, 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 once you are connected online. You can simply Google my name, you will find me online. You will Google the name of the community, you will find it online all over the internet. You can connect me on my contact us page. Uh, just by Google search, you will get all my details. and. Uh, uh, the same applies for uh, the community as well. You can simply Google ALMPG and you will get all the details online. And any further query, doubt, questions, you can leave it over there. So I think we are good to sure, uh, sure. conclude the session. And um, I think we should be connecting everyone online with uh, the course content material and uh, registration <laughs> forms. Yes, yeah. we'll do, we'll do. Jazakallah khair, Rizwan, uh, Brother Rizwan, you know, I appreciate you yeah. gave us some time. I know you are a busy person, at us. Uh, Brother Atat said that you know, have been busy with a lot of other stuff. So uh, we appreciate your time. We appreciate your efforts and you are coming in and encouraging the community. Brother Rizwan, one more thing I want to ma make sure we are clearing. Uh, it's your team who's going to help us uh, train the candidates, right? It's not directly you. The, so we have Is a pool of greatness. Uh, I am okay. okay. a part of very big community of hacking. I won't be naming that right now. And I am the moderator with pseudo name of that particular community. And um, okay. the members who are our trainers are actually members of that community. So everyone is well okay. well capable. And I'm also one of the trainer apart from many other experts. Like someone is very good in web hacking. Someone is very good in network hacking. So our respective trainer will be taking his respective comfort zone part. And I'm pretty sure gotcha. each and every session okay. would be so much exciting that everyone will be on their toes and learning back to back everything. So we'll make sure the quality is well delivered. That's not a concern for the community. Perfect, perfect. Hey, that's what I want. You know, I want all the LMPG members of the community here in the US to get the best out uh, out there, you know, and uh, Alhamdulillah, we, we are glad to partner with you. 
So uh, any other question, please put it on the WhatsApp chat. You know, we can ask Brother Rizwan directly a question through his site as well if you want to reach out to him. Uh, but uh, any other course uh, content, duration, and when we're going to start the timing, I will put those information in the WhatsApp chat or you will be uh, 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 you will be informed through ALMPG uh, if you are a member. So don't worry, we will uh, uh, reach out to you regarding all your questions. But if you have any questions, please feel free to reach out to us. Before I end the session, I want to just quickly uh, let let everybody know that you know we are ALMPG. We started with the intention to help the community out. So we also have a nonprofit organization. It's called the Startup Council. The aim of this Startup Council is to help any technology entrepreneur who have an idea. If you have an idea, you can come to us in 100% uh, free. We will help you whatever you need for. If you need any kind of mentorship, any kind of refinement for your idea, for your business idea, whatever it is, it is it should be a technology idea. We will help you for free. This is a nonprofit organization. It is led by our uh, community member, Brother Adnan Siddiqui, who himself is a tech entrepreneur, serial entrepreneur from Seattle. So he is the pre current president. So if you have any idea, need help on it, uh, we will help you, inshallah. This is called the startupcouncil.org. Go on there and register your idea. And again, this is ALMPG. Support us in any way you want. You know, we have been uh, helping the community out here since 2014. And uh, so any kind of help you want to do, volunteer with us, partner with us or anything, just reach out to us. So by the way, myself, I am one of the co-founder of ALMPG. My name is Daoud Ahmed. Those of you who don't know me, but majority of the people I know here, uh, they know me by my voice. So help, uh, feel free to connect with me on LinkedIn. It's Daoud Ahmed GM, uh, my LinkedIn ID here. You can connect with me. So Jazakallah Khair, uh, Jazakallah Khair uh, from the bottom of my heart to Brother Rizwan and his team, Brother Atta, for setting this up. And oh, thank you so much, Elias Bhai, for setting this up and coordinating with Christine team. Uh, we appreciate your help. I know you are not here. Uh, he is busy with his family. But you know, with this note, I want to end this session with a good dua. And uh, make sure you make dua for ALMPG team, Brother Rizwan and his team. See, this will help. You know, Alhamdulillah, he, has, uh, he is only making our community proud uh, by what he is doing. Brother Rizwan, what you are doing, I think we need more people like you in our community. Uh, if because this will not only create uh, a positive impact in the, in in India, but it it will create a positive impact all over the world. You know, we we get this tag along being a Muslim that we are not contributing to the community. I want to get rid of that tag, and I think you are already you have already taken up that step. I and I encourage all my brothers and sisters who are joined in here that you know take that step. Be that change in the society. Don't wait for a change. Be that change in the society and let it happen. Doesn't matter if you're working for money or not money. Doesn't matter, really, believe me. Money will come. This is, this. Uh, I'll give you a live example of ALMPG. We just started as a Google group, believe me. And Alhamdulillah, Allah has put us up uh, at so many opportunities in our way. Not because we were trying to make money, because we were trying to help the community. Our intention was to have, give back to the community, but Allah has put us in a different position. And believe me, so many business opportunities come to us every single day. And we are just like tired. No, man, we can't do this. We just don't take it because we can't do it. We are limited people. So work towards helping and providing for the community at large. Doesn't matter if it's a Muslim or non-Muslim. Help and educate people in your way. So that's my message. And uh, with the dua, I will end this session. Please, please, please do make uh, dua for uh, uh, Brother Rizwan and his family uh, that is needed. So Alhamdulillah, you know, he has done a great job. And may Allah bless him with all the success in coming years. And may uh, Brother Rizwan, when you when we meet next time, I want to see those 30,000 uh, members become 60,000 or 100,000, inshallah. So all the best to you and your team. Inshallah, we will coordinate and we will work together. And uh, I know Brother Atta did mention that, you know, in future, we want to create a team of 100 plus people here in the U.S. So we can go to uh, agencies and implement the projects there, uh, provide them with security solution. 
that is what we are aiming for we are not just aiming for training people but our aim is our vision long term vision is to pro- create a team of dedicated people who are passionate about providing cybersecurity expertise and once we have built that team then we can go in fact alnpg team can coordinate and we have we are working with some government agencies so what we can do we can go there a police department and we can implement these security projects for them and help them uh, secure their uh, you know institution so that is what we are visioning for in future in next two years or next three years so with this note with the final dua subhana rabbika rabbil izati amma yasifun was salamu ala al mursalin walhamdulillah rabbil alamin bismillahir rahmanir rahim wal asr inna al insana lafi khusr illa alladhina amanu wa amilus salihat wa tawasaw bil haqqi wa tawasaw bis sabr this is your brother daud ahmed thank you so much everybody for joining in and putting in all your effort please remember us in in your dua signing out jazakumullah khair assalamu alaykum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh take care